Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Do we have a mic on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on. Oh, oh, I, I, I set it up, so I turned on the mic. You know. What is going on, everyone? And welcome to the show. What's it doing? The microphone, iPhone, Pro Max to record uh, sound demos with. Believe it or not, when recording sound demos, um, when it comes to your phone, there is no good cheap microphone. Um, no. The problem you run into when recording audio on your phone is that the preamp, uh, most of these like mics have no power. So they're non-amplified microphones. And your phone really does a crappy job of recording the audio. Now, if you use a powered microphone like the Rode VideoMic Go or VideoMic Pro, I'm sorry, VideoMic Pro, it's actually amplified and you can add up to 20 dBs of boost. But reality is what I've found is that the mic on the iPhone works really, really well. The secret to recording audio, like from a sound system, mm -hmm. is don't turn it up so loud. Uh, you're actually better at just turning it up to a conversational level level, and then going back into it and EQing it. Um, but when you have a clip signal, it's really not going to help you. So you can get a really nice, like the stuff, obviously the stuff you hear when we record, um, we use a camera. And we, we, most of the time we're using just a basic mic um, because we figured it out by now. But yeah. if you record your audio system at a normal listening level and then you can go back and, and tweak it a little bit in the software, you, it's way more enjoyable than, you know, like trying to capture a high level into the mic. Because you're going to what happens is the volume, the air is going to clip the diaphragm inside of the microphone. It's Monday already, man. I'm getting old. Me, too. That's what they keep <laughs> telling me. Exactly. Um, I hope everyone had a wonderful weekend. That's right. Say hello to all of you guys. Thanks for stopping in today, and we're gonna have lots of fun today. That's right. We're yeah. gonna do all kinds of neat stuff. Basically, just answer a bunch of questions. We might be one. We do this all the time. Uh, who do you re recommend in Atlanta? There's actually a bunch of guys in Atlanta. Okay. Um, what's what's your mill shop? Traffic Jams. Traffic Jams is one. Um, Markland. Is Markland. A, I don't he's remember gonna the name of his. Yeah, but yeah, but he's still there. Markland Designs. Thank you. Um, and what is, what was, uh, where did, um, what, where did, what, uh, Jesus. Jesus? No. Laser oh. guy. God damn. Sorry. John Brettel. Where did John Brettel work? Traffic jams? No. Traffic. No, but cartoons? he's not, he's not in there. Yeah, but it's still a good cartoons. shop. It's okay. Cartoons. Cartoons. Yeah, cartoons. Yeah, cartoons. Thank you, Ada. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ada. Yeah. Coming in. Yeah. Cartoons. Um, so there's, there's a couple guys there. Yeah. Uh, for sure. For sure. Yeah, I would um, be like. Yeah. Road. All right, hold on. Wait a minute. What are you? Uh, where are what, are you what are you going? I was looking for the. Somebody said road. Uh, road video mic mini, with two adapters is what I use. All right, and there again, it, road. Uh, we have them all. I'm not gonna lie, and I have every road mic they make except for the new version of mm -hmm. the road video mic, whatever the hell it is. But I, I, I have them all. I have every single one that they have for a phone. Um, yeah, I and. Know. Uh, cartoons Russell. and honestly when it, if you're not the best money is the video mic pro it's big it's bulk bulky but it does the best job it, hands down it's just gonna hey, do it. but um if you're recording something with the camera dude we we had okay just to give you an idea we had to do a shoot outside once and we had all this camera gear and we had the phone as a backup Random, just like at the last minute, I was like, let's just use the phone too. And it was windy and all the mics just went to shit. And yeah. we, we were almost at the point where I was like, crap, we just, we lost the whole shoot. And then I played the sound from the phone and it was perfect. And I was like, all right, well, there we go. Um, Apple is doing very Apple's good. Apple's doing good. So yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm all for it. They do a great job. Hey, from Kentucky, What's you guys up? are my YouTube favorites. Thank, Thank you, you, man. man. We Thank love you. that. Uh, all right, so we're six minutes in. Let's roll that beautiful bean footage real quick. Some of you guys may have heard of this product before, and some of you may not. Let's Probably. take a look.
And that for most of you guys is the IRTA2, the two channel electrical RTA. If you're interested in picking yourself up one of those, you can find it at dnftooldrawer.com. That is dnftooldrawer.com right there on the left. You can find one of those. And it's a, it's a beautiful tool to have. It Everyone is. should have one. And if you don't, well, hey, you know what? I can't help you, but you should get one because they're awesome. And where the hell is it? There right it is. There. All right, yep. there it is. And we'll let that scroll across the bottom for a couple of minutes. But there we go. Trying to get back to the comments. I know, I know. Um, hey, we have this small little thing that we do on Facebook called the 12 Volt Clean Wire Club. Some That's of you right. guys have heard of it before. And every week, Fernando scours it to find who he feels is the, you know, puts out the coolest stuff. Uh, this week, Fernando decided to do something silly, and he put <laughs> me up there. So that's that's me. That's, that's an his, old guy doing. That's all an that old stuff. guy holding some stuff, and uh, that's one of his favorite installs that we did in a, yeah. in a Mustang. Is that a Mustang? No, no. that's a um, Toyota or something. He saw, I don't know, Hyundai. It's a car. Sure. Yeah. Uh, that's one of his favorites that we did. Um, so yeah, that's great. I, apparently, I get the guy. Um, oh yeah, I didn't even see that. Look at that. What? Happy birthday! No, this picture here. In oh the yeah, corner. yeah, yeah. That was a SEMA. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Very oh, cool, right? So cool. That is so cool. Very nice. Um, anyways, uh, for those of you guys who like to be featured in the 12 Clean Wire Club, just post your cool pictures, and there you go. If any of you guys are going to Knowledge Fest this weekend, any of the 12 Volt professionals are headed out there, Damn. we are going to be doing a class at 9.30 or 9.20? 9.10. 9.10. Basically, the first class Friday morning, we are going to be teaching it. Um, so, yeah, it's oh. a 9.10. 910 is in the metal. The metal uh, class snap, is snapshots. The great shots. Uh, instructors are Dean Bayette, Fernando Lopez from Five Star Car Stereo. It's in the sales and marketing track. It's approximately one hour and 20 minutes long. And the point of the class is to teach you how to take better pictures. Apparently, we know something about cameras mm. and a little bit, yeah. you know, yeah. in another life. Anyways, uh, for those of you guys going to be there, check that class out. We're also doing two classes with Kicker. Which we'll talk about a little bit later. All right. That's right. All right. What do you all got for right. me? What all harness resistors do I need to add a five channel amplifier to a 2017 F-150 non-premium and keeping eight inch factory radio? I'm going to give you two choices. Two choices of what you could do. Um, sounds like a Beastie Boys song. Okay. So here we go. Uh, if you want to do it like the coolest way ever, go to iData. That is idata.com or maestro.com. I believe it's just maestro.com, uh, this website right here. Um, you can head over to that, and Fernando, go ahead and type in 2017 Ford F-150. They make the DFO2 harness. That is a T harness to go behind your radio. So whatever you decide to do, the DFO2 is going to be the hardest you need. Now, if you decide to get a DSR1, the DSR1 will reflash the radio. That's AR. You, you it's not replace the radio. It's add an amplifier. Uh, you got to go back. Right. Um, the DSR-1 will reflash the radio and give you a flat EQ. Actually, you know what? Hold on. You don't even need the DSR-1. You just need an AR. An AR right here. Yeah, you just need the AR. So, wrong page. Sorry. If you get the AR, that guy right there, the Maestro AR and the DFO-2, that will allow you to reprogram the radio. Basically, what it's doing is the four scan, four scan stuff. So if you're a master of four scan, then you don't need any of this. You just need the DFO2. But if you're not, you don't want to get involved in any of that nonsense. You just want it to do what it needs to do. Get a DFO2, an AR, follow the programming. It'll allow you to reflash. They also make a new RCA harness that you'll probably want to get as well. Um, but that's the easiest way to do it. That'll give you four volt. That'll give you no EQ, variable voltage output, super sexy to go into your amplifiers. You don't need anything else. Um, boom, Bob's your uncle, everybody's happy. Yeah. Now, if you're going to do it the other way, the old fashioned way, like we used to do it, you need a DFO2, you need a set of, uh, what are they called? Jesus. Getting old, forgetting things. Uh, audio control LGDs, the huh. blues. So you need the DFO2, the LGD blues, um, and then you're going to need some form of a high level to low level adapter, uh, either via the amplifier or via DSP, whichever you like. Uh, and then you can go at it. But either way, we'll get you where you want to be and get you some sound. Personally, I like the new AR method. Uh, we worked with iData to make that happen. So we're pretty excited about it. And we love using it. Yeah. That's All the right. preferred method. Now, if you're going to do the four scan and reprogram it yourself, DFO2, you're still going to want those 
Actually, I don't think you're going to need them at that point because it's reflashing the radio. But I'd still put the LGD blues on there just to be safe. It's not going to hurt anything. All right, here we go. Oh, my gosh, Scott. Really? Could you please help to dispense any myths and include any facts regarding the concept of running more than recommended RMS power to your drivers when using active crossovers? Uh on myself, I'm using passive crossovers right now, but plan to buy an additional audio control amplifier and use 100% channels for my front tweeters and 150 watts per channel for my front mid bass. Any information you can provide would be great help for me to decide which new front speakers I should purchase. Thanks. All right. Could you please? All right. What do we need? RMS power more than recommended rms power for your drivers when using active cross i don't is that a thing go ahead and close that down All right hold on let me do something here because this is ridiculous hold on. that would be uh, we're gonna go back to this because that was crazy um i i don't know why i don't know that that's a thing like i like i don't really think about running extra power going active um, that's kind of odd. Yeah. I mean, you know, when we talk about active or passive, everyone says passive. Oh, it uses so much power. It uses so much power, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then you go active and it's like, oh, it's, you know, you, you get more power to your speakers and, and all that nonsense. Um, the reality is you're not going to get a hundred watts your tweeters ever, ever. Cause your tweeters can't handle a hundred watts, even though they say they can, they're, they'll never do it. They get maybe two watts if you're lucky. By the time it actually plays that, <laughs> um, that's why you never play a thousand hertz test tone with the speaker connected because you'll you'll launch them into the stratosphere. Um, I like to do power for one reason: equalization. Okay, uh, and what do I mean by that? If I'm EQing a system, we always say pull down, pull down, pull down, pull down, pull down. And if you have power, pulling down is easy because yes. When you DEQ or, or EQ, we'll just call it EQing. When you're EQing a system, you are pulling some of the sound away from it. And it can be substantial in some cases. Like we're trying to make left and right match, man. It, it can You can remove a ton of sound from it. And if you have 35 watts, well, then your system gets pretty quiet pretty quick. So by having enough power to EQ and pull down then yes, you, that would be an argument for going with more power. I think, you know, I guess, yeah, I, I don't know. That's how I kind of always looked at it. Like I'm going to EQ the system. I'm going to be pulling down. So I'm not really worried about the power handling of the speakers because by the time I pull down all my EQ bands, there's going to be less power coming from the ample or less perceived power getting to those speakers. So, I don't know. but I mean, with the hundred, I mean, that, that, that power is right. I mean, obviously we do a ton of audio control and we put them on every speaker we possibly sell. So it's never really an issue. Um, I don't know. hope that helped go with that. Uh, hey guys, considering getting the infinity DSP, but I'm not sure if I can properly connect it to my Focal four channel amp. Uh, it has just RCAs and no high-level input. The outputs on the DSP are speaker line <laughs> with high current, 25 watts. What can I do? All right. This would be one of those situations where this would not be the appropriate piece for you to buy. Um, it is an excellent piece. However, you need an amplifier that does have high-level input in order for it to function properly. If you tried to feed it into your Focal 4 channel amplifier, which I find weird that it doesn't have high level capability, you'd want an amplifier that has at least 10 volts of input. That's 10 volts of, of you know input into the amplifier. And then you could do this. So if it doesn't have it, then yeah, that would, that would kind of suck. If I was going to do something like this, I would look at maybe something a little different. Maybe a DSR-1, maybe the Metra DSP Advanced, um possibly a tweak from jl to uh, be honest i think i think it's in the art in in the uh well it's always going to put out 25 watts no 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 the high level input it's not in the same yeah, harness. No, he has a focal amplifier what he's saying is his focal amplifier is rcas and no high level input that's not the problem the infinity is fine okay the problem is with his focal amplifier not having high level input 
because you can use the infinity amplifier as an amplifier uh -huh. or as a DSP line driver into an existing system. Okay. However, it's going to be high voltage in. So if your amplifier can't handle like 10 volts of input, then you're going to have a problem because mm -hmm. essentially now the amplifier is like a really high end line driver. So I would check to see what kind of voltage input your Focal is capable of doing. Handling. If it can handle 10 volts, you're in business. If it can't, then I would maybe look at just a regular standalone DSP. There you go. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks again for the Alpine video with Steve Brown. Love learning that knowledge. That was a fun time. I'm not going to lie. That was a really good time. He's an awesome wealth of knowledge. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can that be done for GM radios like you just explained for Fords? They, um... So, yes, but no. Uh, different piece, same basic idea. Mm -hmm. So for the GM, if it falls within the right realm of years, uh, PAC makes the uh, Amp Pro GM... 61. Thank you. Amp Pro GM 61. Now, the Amp Pro GM 61 is designed for the Bose system that you use most. For you and I, what did I just say? I have no idea. I do. But the most system is on all cars. It's on all the GM cars that use that system. So what you can do is you can plug in an Amp Pro GM 61. One of two things is going to happen. Now, keep in mind, you have non-Bose. This is just the factory base model GM audio system that you've gone to pack-audio.com to make sure that it falls within the years of your vehicle. And if it does, then you buy the Amp Pro GM 61, you plug it in. One of two things is going to happen, as I said. You're either going to get a left and right audio signal when playing FM and Sirius XM, and it's going to sound great. Or you're only going to get a left signal or a right signal when playing Sirius XM or FM. But the digital media, meaning anything plugged in the USB, such as Bluetooth, your phone, anything like that is going to sound left and right fine. Oh, that sucks, right? Okay. On the unit, there's four dip switches. Unplug the unit, flip dip switch number three, plug the unit back in, let it set for about five or ten minutes, plug the unit back in. And now what that'll do is that'll tell it the scenario that it's just been put in, which is that the tuner is only playing audio through the left or right channel. It'll automatically add, a clone the channel to the other side. Now it's cloning the channel, which means you're gonna lose stereo separation listening to FM and Sirius XM, which honestly, those both suck anyways. And if you're still listening to Sirius XM from the tuner, move to the phone. It sounds a lot better. Add or replace Spotify, Pandora, Apple Music, whatever you got. Anyways, then that, that will give you your audio output. So you can adjust the output on the Infinity DSP, I'm guessing. Okay. There you go. That may uh, also work too. But check your output voltage. Check your input voltage on your Focal amplifier. And then dial in the output. Vo oh, yeah, I could do it through the volume. Duh. Yeah. Uh, so what job? you'd want to do is just adjust the output volume, output voltage. So, how? okay, so how you'd set that up is you would put the infinity piece in first. On the right-hand side of the software is the level control for the output gain. And so you would play a test tone with your voltmeter. Uh, set to AC the on output. the output of the amplifier, the infinity amplifier, and you turn, you you know, volume at max, max on distorted volume, whatever that might be, and then you would play your 0 dB test track, 0 dB test track, mm -hmm. so 1,000 hertz, 40 hertz, and you would have your digital multimeter attached to the output set to AC, and you'd have the software open and you would adjust there again on the right hand left hand side sorry on the left hand side you'd adjust the volume down until you get to the ideal input voltage of your uh focal amplifier which will be in the specifications for the amplifier so if it says four volts mac turn it down until you have four volts test all channels with both frequencies yeah you're rocking and rolling thank you ada i didn't think of that see he's such a smart guy he is he's such a smart guy all right See, you know, can't think of everything. Getting old. <laughs> Got, yeah, gotten okay. old. Um, I've got a 2022 F-150 with a big screen and bass radio. I can't find shit for adding amps to it or antenna harnesses. Uh, 
definitely doing DSP regardless. Yes, you're right. There is nothing for it right now. Zero zilch, buck hiss. Um, amp pack audio.com just, just, just came out with a harness. Uh, it does use a new harness from the old one. And right now there is nothing available. However, uh, if you can get their harness that will, it's a T harness that's designed to plug in so that you can add things. Most of the time, you know, you're still going to need L with that. You will need LGD greens, the new L the LGD greens, not the LGD blues on the new systems. So, and then from there, just you, you could do this one of two ways. Um, there again, I believe they make the four scan stuff for the 2022. 2022. You can go on a program it that way, which if you don't want to, totally understand. Uh, you could use a kicker key lock on channels one and two to go in and flatten the signal out and take care of all the nonsense. So you could use the pack harness directly into the key lock. The key lock uh, does have 60 ohm of load resistance, which may or may not be enough. So I would pick up the LGD greens just to be on the safe side. So go T harness, LGD greens, key lock. Um, and that'll give you two channels of great front audio. And from there you can build off of that. If you want front to rear fade, I would just, I wouldn't worry about putting a key lock on the rear. I would just run those directly into my DSP and you know, you're, you're not going to be like, Oh, oh God, listen to the rear. Um, it seems like it'd be a bit overkill, but that'd be a simple way to do that system. Um, or get a DSP that has de equalization built into it. So for example, like a Helix product does have de equalization capability, um, a fix, a tune, uh, JL Audio gives you those, the VXI stuff. Audio Control does have basic um, de-equalization capability as well. So uh, it, it's it, we've done them. It's, it's nothing to fret about, man. It's, it's, it's a fairly straightforward install. I'm going active three-way in the front and passive in the rear on a DM608. Will this be okay? And how do I get more mid-bass sound from the dash? Uh, two, four, six, rear. What are you gonna do for sub? So that's that's only eight channels, and you have eight channels, so you need a ninth channel for the subwoofer, unless you're just not gonna run the subwoofer for the DSP, which is gonna be a problem because you just complained you want more bid, mid bass from the dash. In order to do that, you have to have the subwoofer in there because you're gonna need to adjust the subwoofer's delay and volume to max to match up with the front mid base and then that will give you the more mid base as you say from up front because the the mid base driver or the mid base drive mid range driver or whatever the, the lowest frequencies in the front um is only going to give you so much mid base it, it's it's not they're good for that but they're not going to give you the greatest mid base in the world depending if you just want a ton of money mid base um that's where the subwoofer is going to come in because the subwoofer is better designed to give you that deeper bass sound and what they call upfront bass is going to have to be based on through a DSP. So really the only way I could see doing it on a 608 is if you were to run mono rear, because you could do that. You could run mono rear, meaning not left and right fade, just pick a mono signal for the rear speakers and then use the other channel for the subwoofer. So go three way active up front, mono rear, mono sub, and then you could EQ it that way. That would that would probably be the best way to do that. But yes, you're going to need to use time alignment as well as sit in the car, and you'll be able to move those subwoofers up front through. Okay, perceived move the. It's not really not really moving them up front, but that's that's how you're going to get that stronger up front mid base. That and of course sound treatment the the, the heck out of the, the the vehicle so that there's no rattles, nothing that moving. Because anything that moves and vibrates and, you know, if you have a mid bass mount in here and it's, it's moving and this is moving, eventually you're going to get this and you're going to get no sound. All right. Have you guys ever used the bit DMI with the AP 8.9 amp? No. Oh, wait. Yeah. yeah did in the yeah. BMW. <clears throat> no. Did car. we? In Siyaki's car. Yes, uh -huh. we did, mm -hmm. which is now Bill's car. It does. Bill's car, yes. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Uh, it's going in the 2000 BMW X5 with top hi-fi system. I'm concerned about the output level on the bit DMI. I've only used the bit amps with analog inputs, and they aren't the most robust in terms of power, but it has the channels I need to make system work at right price point. 
Uh, it is not the Forza version, unfortunately. Ooh, uh, just worried about getting enough signal to the amplifier. I don't think the signal is the amplifier because you can go in and adjust the, the signal input and the settings. Um, there's a now on which has been there for a couple of years now, but they have a they have two settings for the input now uh, that they invented just for the American market, which gives you a hotter input, allows the amplifier to play up a little bit louder. Um, I'm hoping that's going to be enough for you. Uh, now, just to give you an, uh, another thought process here, maybe it might help, is there's a company called, hold on, let me pull this up here real quick, and then we'll put back up the next ad. Shut that off. Yep. There's a company here called MoBridge. That's the one there, MoBridgeUSA.com, MoBridgeUSA. Uh, MoBridge makes the same bit piece that you're talking about, and they make them with RCAs. So you can get them, you can get a, you can get the same product, literally the same product um, from Mobridge and you might be able to get it in the RCA version, which may help you out some if you'd rather do that instead of the, the digital. So just a thought. Um, before we go anywhere, uh, I would like to pull this one up here on the top. Hey guys, have you heard of Audio Control? Well, if you haven't, you can check them out at audiocontrol.com. They are a proud sponsor of the show. Uh, they've been they've been our longest sponsor. Those guys are great. Uh, on the show earlier, we talked about these little gadgets here. These are the ACLGDs. They make them in blues, greens, and grays. And what they are is load resistors that are designed to go into the behind the radio at the factory radio or back at the amplifiers. It really doesn't matter. And what they're designed to do is emulate the speaker's resistance on that factory radio or amplifier so that the unit will not shut off because these amplifiers now have protection circuits on it. And when they don't see resistance on them, they shut down. In some cases, they will play. However, they will play distorted in, in frequencies that you typically don't hear, like in the F-150s. The LGD blues on the previous body style was needed in order to rail those tweeters in so that they don't blow and cause all kinds of crazy distortion. So if you're doing an install and you're wondering, hey, man, why did my sound just cut off? Because sometimes it can take up to two to three days before it will actually shut off GM. So check them out. They're green, by the way, for the GM. All right, guys. Uh, moving on. Back to the back to the regularly scheduled show. Uh, I have two ohm rear speakers, six by nines, and I run them off the rear outputs of the DMX905 for rear fill only. DMX9. Oh, yeah. Okay. So. Are we talking like the factory cheap two ohm speakers? Or are we talking the premium audio ones? If we're talking the cheap factory ones. Yeah, I mean it'll work for a little while. The amp the amplifier inside of it really wants to see a three point three ohm load, not necessarily the two ohm load. But for the mm -hmm. cheap ones, you might be okay as long as you're playing it at normal listening levels. It shouldn't be a problem. You should be fine. It's when you're trying to get more out of that little fifteen watt amplifier that you really run into problems. So. Um, I'm going to say, yeah, go for it. You're, you're going to be fine. But know that there are limitations to the output performance you're going to get from it. I would eventually change them out for something that is going to sound better. Uh, maybe some 6902s from Kenwood. Yep. Okay. Uh, AC LGD. Okay. What's up from Australia? That's right. AVDC. Call them in the house. AVD, yes, AVDC for sure. That's right. Uh, are great. Even in head unit doesn't need a load. They can also help with turn off pop, turn on pop, DSP high level inputs. Definitely, they are great to have. Um, by default, now we just put them on. I That's mean, anytime right. you're doing anything high level, you always do it. Bobby's in What's the up, house. Bobby? Hope he's feeling better. His back was kind of bothering him oh, last night. Man. Uh, for those of you guys, uh, we had a party yesterday. You guys threw a surprise party, man. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> so Haley and Fernando and, and Fernando's household, uh, along with Sue. Um, yeah, the whole the whole team. The whole team there except, pulled together. Mister over here, I, and they totally got me, man. They totally surprised me. Yeah. I had no idea. Like I thought I was going to Naomi's birthday party, which is Fernando's daughter, who ju yeah. recently just had a birthday. And like, yeah, we're gonna celebrate this party, um, and you know, we want you guys. Yeah, we're coming. Great. Um, all right, hold on. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna, I can go back. So, Fernando is gonna, yeah. ah. all right, hold on. All right, we'll, we'll play a little bit of this here. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. All right, you're gonna start over. Yeah, uh, all right, ready? Go for it. All right, so here it is. Oh, wait, let me turn that microphone on. All right, so there you go. 
<laughs> no idea what was happening. It was pretty crazy. Um, Haley, right there. Right? Haley, big, oh my gosh, yeah, she set it up. Uh, there's little Fernando walking up there. Um, pretty insane. Uh, of course, mom is, is there. Bobby was there. Oh, there's my little partner. There's my little partner right there, little Grayson. Oh, yeah, here we go. He was there. And, uh, Aaron is, of course, off to the right right there. So I'm going to just like, say, speed it up a little speed bit. It out a little bit right there. So there's, yeah. there's the whole crew. There's Bobby. That's Bobby. Uh, cousins, best friend from uh, oldest friend right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, family, friends. There's Bill. There's Mr. Here's Bill you. Freeman right there. Shane. Nice Shane. Job. Nathan. Is that Jeff Smith? Who's That's Jeff Smith? That's the good. That's the Jeff Smith. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they yeah. totally got yeah. me on that one. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was late, of course, because I thought I was going to a Latino party. And no one ever shows up on time for that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, that's, that was good. Yeah, they, to good. they totally got me. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Hold on. This was cool. Oh, wrong button. So this was cool. Um, Hey, Dean. Uh, this was, uh, uh, for those of you guys Welcome that don't know Picker, uh, he is, have a great birthday. he's number two. Talk to you later. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So he was there to – oh, let me shut this off right now. Um, he just, just telling stories. Like, uh, I'm telling everybody who they are because most people don't, don't know. So let's, <laughs> yeah. move, let's move through that. All right. So, All right, so there's Lori. There's Steve. Dude. Oh, this was too cool. Steve yeah, actually. That was really cool, dude. Steve sung me happy birthday. Like, totally the most amazing thing ever. All right, well, we won't, we won't kill his uh, his party voice. Yeah. Um, but oh, that was great. He's going fishing tomorrow. But, no, it was really cool. Uh, the guys from Rockford sent a, a birthday greeting, which was hey, really yeah, awesome. Yeah, they yeah. they all, uh, Bill Jackson got up and talked. There you go. Um, That's here's, you. here's the cake. Fernando. Fernando was on cake duty. <laughs> Yeah, that was great. You fifty, <laughs> you fifty. Um, they, Alex, funny, dude. Alex like, sent a uh, sent a little clip yeah, to say uh, you know happy birthday. So that was really pretty awesome. Yeah. There, um, we had a good time. We had a good time. Yeah, it was yeah, a lot of yeah. fun. It was pretty cool. It was, uh, it's funny because like I'm going to get the cake and and the lady's like, no, we cannot do that. Because I'm like, I want something that says like YouTube, but not YouTube, but like you yeah. fifty. And they're like, no, we can't. It's copyright. And I'm like. Just a red dot, bro. Just a red <laughs> dot with a 15. That was funny. That was great. Uh, yeah, there's plenty of cake left. Between the Haley cake and the Fernando cake, there was there's plenty of that cake. There was a lot of cake. So there was, there was yeah. a lot of cake. Ha! Huh. He's going fishing tomorrow, so yeah. he's good. Um, Go up to John there. Uh, down one. Can... Down one. Down. Right there. Boom. Uh, how do I get GTO to work with low-level inputs? You can't. Um, GTO stands for great turn on. What it's looking for is the six volt DC carrier wave that comes out of the factory amplifier that isn't on low level. It's just not going to work that way. Um, I mean, no, I mean, yeah, there's really, it's really, there's nothing that, that could turn that on low level wise. Um, trying to think why, why, why you would, why need do it. you need it if you have. Yeah, I don't know why. Why would you need that? That's, right. That's pretty much the that would question. be the question. Yeah. Give me give me a reason why you'd want that. Then then, then we'll. Thanks, Scott. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I like Haley cake. Need recipe, please. Uh, you go to the grocery store. You buy the Duncan Hines uh, strawberry cake and the white cream cheese frosting, and then buy a pound of sprinkles. All right. I'm real easy. Turn, turn on, on pop. pop. Uh, there again, that's that's not that gonna no help you with turn, turn on, on pop. pop. No. Um. What? Okay. What you may need is some different way to turn on the system that GTO. So you'd have to. Okay. So if GTO is causing you like turn on pop, then you'd have to go into the unit and disable GTO, and then find another way to turn on the LC7I. How do you um, disable or the, the GTO? Or the LC. Um, you have to open the unit and bypass it. Just switch. You got to switch it, but you Jumper. have to open all those. Now, if you're looking for a different way to turn on, obviously accessory power would work. Um, 
So, okay, so in some scenarios, every now and then, we'll run into a weird scenario where the you need a delay of some kind. Now, Metro makes a piece called a trigger, and the trigger will allow you to um, set up a, a delay turn on so that things don't turn on on time. Uh, another thing you can do is if you're using GTO to turn on the LC7i, do not use the output of or, or of the LC7i and turn on, I'm using the LC61200 with low level uh, with, with on. remote on. So, well, we did, did, so what kind of GTO. radio do you have? How right. are you getting the, so the GTO would be off because you're using low level. What, kind of, what kind of car do you the, have? So the other thing too is the low level, the GTO circuit only works on the high level input. It, it, yeah. It's, 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 it's the only place great, it exists. Yeah because it's looking for DC. Um, what, okay, so there again, if, you, if you're using the radio, an aftermarket radio to turn on the aftermarket amplifier, you get a turn on pop. What you may want to do is consider putting, yeah, okay, Pioneer yeah, 8600. Um, you may want to consider putting one on accessory and taking it off remote. Or another thing you can do is, is find out, do you need a delay turn on? Meaning is the amplifier turning on is the radio turning the amplifier on too fast and the radio? So what you do, if you need to find out if you need a delay, take the remote turn on off of the amplifier. Turn the radio on. I have somebody up front. You need two people. I have somebody turn the radio on and go one, two, three, and put the remote turn on the amplifier. If you still get the pop, there's something else going on. If you don't get the pop, then that's telling you that it is a issue with timing, in which case you could get the Metro trigger and add a delay to that. So it goes like one, two, you had two second delay, turn on the amplifier. So you kind of need to find out where the pop is coming from first before we try to, but the GTO isn't the reason. Hey, Eddie. And hopefully you don't have a relay in there because sometimes like if you yeah. wire up the relay <laughs> up wrong, yeah, you'll get some weird turn on pop from that. So yeah, pretty much. Um, which test tones do you used to set gains on the kicker key 800.4 um 180.4 yeah yeah the old one um the better one in my book no, i'm just kidding um well kicker has the test tones well they just have pink noise though but they don't yeah. really give you a test tone for that so and it's 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 honestly my biggest complaint about it because you like can't disconnect mm -hmm. the speaker wires mm -hmm. um so typically what we do on that amplifier is because is it's going in a high level situation. We have a great song that we like to use that has really dynamic. It's, um, where's my phone? What, what is the, Gwen, is it Gwen Stefani? No, it's not no. Gwen Stefani. It's, uh, it's hella cool. Cool J. No, no, it's, 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 no, <laughs> yeah, isn't it hella cool? I know. From, yes, uh, it is. It is. I can't, uh, I'm getting see. old. Can't remember these things. Um, Anyways, what it does is it's a really dynamic track that has a ton of bass, ton of treble, and there's a lot of dump, dump, dump. And we use that actually to set those when we do that. So we'll keep it at what we set the radio for is maximum distortion. And we know if we get those lights, to, we'll adjust the inputs until that light comes on. No doubt. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So this is the song. Not that one. Well, you're, uh, this is the song we like to use, which is the hella good, no doubt. All right. And that song will ride those just those clip lights. So you just until they just they blink on, and then we're done. So it's a safe song to play that we use to tone every single kicker key 200, 180. We use the same thing. We put that on. He cranks it up to wherever we set the to set the amplifier at, and then we just turn the dials. Those lights come on. We're done. We know it's we you know. And then we just dial it back till the lights go off, and then it's perfect. It's on. It's unconventional, but hey, man, that's what we like to use. Yo, hey, thank you, thank you, man. We watched this since day one. Dang! Wow, like they're throwing the <laughs> yeah, throwing the stuff throwing out the and... manual, and getting yelled at. Oh, yeah. you guys suck. We got yelled at. Though. Oh, we got yelled at a sure. lot. What can cause continuous loud bass when you turn radio on and oh, yeah, volume, volume zero, zero RCA remote wire are not are or bad amp? Um, that's a tough. Are we using Turn RCAs? RCAs wire. Continuous loud bass when you turn radio on and volume zero. 
Typically, that only happens when you're doing high level. I don't think we've ever had. Okay, are you using a high level to low level adapter, or that would be my first question because mm -hmm. typically that only happens like with high level to low level situations to where you either turn the radio off or turn it down, and the, and the signal goes off. And what happens is when the signal goes off, it it basically turns into a dead short. Uh, well, not a dead short. It basically just turns into straight like <laughs> sound. Um, in which case you just turn the volume all the way down. You never actually, or you turn it to one. And uh, cause the preamp is still on and still putting out sound. So the only time we've ever run into this is when we're doing a high level to low level. And it's usually just a crappy high level to low level adapter that doesn't have any protection built in for this kind of thing. Like an LC, uh, LC1i would take care of that. But um, if it's like an aftermarket radio and you're getting this problem, I have no idea. That's kind of strange. But yeah. typically, it's nothing wrong. It's just the radio is causing the issue, and the amplifier is just reacting to it. Because remember, amplifiers are reactive. They just react to whatever signal you're feeding them. So what that's telling me is that at volume zero, whatever the source unit is, is feeding that amplifier with that signal. So it's coming from the source. It's not RCA. It's not remote turn on. It's whatever is feeding the amplifier. It's just a direct result of that. So um, it's not low level, so it's high level. What's that? It's high level. Is it high level? It. Yeah. Yeah. Get a better a high level, low level adapter. Get like an LC1i because um, that's that's where your problem is. It's just, it's just not a good high level to low level or the amplifier is high level to low level. Is it very good? Um, but yeah, we run into every now and then you run into that. It's just because the system is shutting off the audio and the amplifier is trying to reproduce whatever you're feeding it. I use the GTO and have an epicenter in my 2016 F-150. Do you think that the Metra delay turn on that you mentioned will work to remove my woofer pop? If you, I use the if you, I use it on the epicenter. Uh, um, is an epicenter micro or regular epicenter? I think is the question I have to ask. So, um, but. Yes, to answer your question, yeah, it would probably work because that's it's a timing thing. It's it's too much. Yeah, it's a timing thing. So that or just I think it's a popping show. If you get a, a you could also do if you could also another thing you could use too is the um it's called a TR4. A TR4 is an external like GTO, it's it's a, it's a low voltage or it's a it's a six volt DC trigger. You hook it up to a speaker. Um, so the same. So what you do is you put it that same. You just tap a speaker wire, okay? And what it's going to do is it's going to look regular epicenter. Okay, so a TR4 would probably work too. Um, we do have a video on a TR4. What it's going to do is you're going to tap one of the speaker wires, and it is going to create the the turn on for you. So you'll basically use there again do the test i talked about earlier to see if you know it is in fact coming from a timing thing um and you could either try tr4 or the trigger from metra one of those yeah. would allow you to to do the job um all right the time to switch yeah uh hey guys morel hi-fi is a proud sponsor of the show you can find them at morelhifi.com uh right now coming up later this month we're gonna be doing a full system with the maximus stuff maximo 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 he yeah so the maximo he is replacing yeah. the maximus 602s mark yeah. twos so they've decided to move all of the one maximo line. maximus underneath one brand uh which is the maximo we'll have the maximo he twos or they're not two so it's, no, it's maximo maximo H -E, yes for high efficiency yeah. so That's we're right. gonna be putting those into the haley lab which we're pretty excited about. So stay tuned for that coming up shortly. But if you'd like to find out more about the HEs or anything for that matter, because we yeah. talk a lot about Morel. If you guys haven't dug deep into their website, spend five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour, and dig deep into it. Check out some of their speakers. My personal favorites are one of my personal, they're all my favorites, let's be honest. But one of my personal favorites is the Virtus Carbon Nanos. If you guys haven't seen these, check yeah. them out. They're oh, yeah. incredible. They're like this thin. It's silly how, how awesome they are. They are pancakes. That's Let's right. call them got going on here. 
Uh, sometimes the door speakers can vibrate, feed voltage into the LOC, and cause movement in the subwoofer, which vibrates the door speaker. Yes, that is also a problem that you run into. That's why a better high-level to low-level adapter is really good. Uh, like a microphone feeding back in a PA system. Very much true. And, and when the head unit is on, <laughs> we'll generally suppress the signal, but LOC won't necessarily. And that's why you need a good LOC to prevent silly stuff like this from happening. That's so, right. Um, when you're talking about just using a resistor-based or a transformer-based LOC, there's not a lot going on there. So it's they're yeah. kind of dumb LOCs. And I don't mean that like dumb. I mean like not smart LOCs. And the smarter LOCs not good enough for what you're trying usually to do. have the circuitry in and prevent silly stuff like that from happening. So yeah. it's kind of nice. Yeah. yeah, baby. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It's freaking awesome. Freaking awesome. Uh, what do you got? That's it. That's I mean, it. We, we cut out with we, oh, Wow. That's crazy, crap. right? Yeah. Uh, oh, we'll hang go on. Home early. Right there. We have a uh, Jeff Smith. When you had Jeff Smith on talking about DSPs, he said he runs three times the power. I think that is what the guy is asking. And that was what I kind of answered when I was talking about I go with more power because I'm going to be pulling down. And that's what Jeff was referring to is that when you're EQing, you're pulling all the bands down and that is going to reduce the perceived power. You know, so if like you have a 75 watt amp and I go in and I remove a ton of this to equalize it out, then you're going to lose a ton of power going into that. That's why some people that buy DSPs automatically go, bro, this DSP sucks, man. I lost all. It doesn't sound as good anymore. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, uh, okay. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. Yeah. But. Just turn them all up and boost it. <laughs> Go for the boost, man. Go for the boost. That's what it's all about. We, we want to have, uh, you know, floor noise out the wazoo. How do you know if it's better to use flash drive or your phone as a source to the aux for song Sound quality? quality? I mean, years ago, we did a test on all of this just to see what was actually better. Mm -hmm. um, where we. Yeah, but like uh, years ago, now we have totally different. Well, yeah, it was years ago, but I yeah. mean, it was still the same thing. We basically sat there and we tested voltage outputs and different frequencies. And at the end of the day, they were, they were all very similar. Yeah. I think it just comes down to the source that you're using. Um, you know, it, there again, what kind of preamp output does the device have? Uh, I mean, I'm an iPhone user and Apple puts a lot of effort into trying to make it not to say Android doesn't. A lot of the better Android phones have great, you know, outputs to go into the radio. So I, I don't know if there's any right or wrong answer to this. It's just, you know, I think it's whatever song you're playing, you want the best version of that song and then you'll get the, you know, a happy output. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, just in case I need this information, could you please tell me where the best place in my 2006 F-150 will be to tap into for turning the amplifier on? Um, thanks, guys. Good old day. Uh, I mean, we never do anything other than just use the, the, the turn on. The uh, Yeah, exactly. Okay. If you're going to use a TR-4, to do high level, um, come off of the center channel output. That seems to work the best. I don't know why, it just does. Um, but we've never had an issue where we're, we're doing that. Um, we've also never used the epicenter to turn on the amplifier. We'd use the amplifier to turn on the epicenter, but not, not that way. Yeah. So. Uh, power is never a problem. Lack of control is the problem. <laughs> Ah, this is true. This is true. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can put a heck of a lot of power to things as long as it's under control. Uh, I mean, we did a video a long time ago where we took uh, six and a halves. Uh -huh. And when we proper, when you properly set up the six and a half, you know, crossover points, EQ and stuff like that, you could, you could obviously apply way more power to the speaker than it's rated for. But, you know. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. I'm using GTO in my D51300, which turns on my epicenter. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. That's weird. Uh, I got an iPhone, and I get sound quality difference between my Android phone. Is it good or yeah. better or worse? Which one do you like better? Yeah. That would be um, great. Yeah. Yeah. Fine, yeah. 
Um, but yeah, there is going to be a difference. I mean, obviously, because they're not going to be using the same how they're not going to be using the same preamp sections. You know, Apple designed it one way, Android or whoever made the phone is going to design it the different way. So there will be differences in that. Um, it's one of the joys of, you know, what do you recommend for a center channel amp? Who offers these anymore? Nobody. But uh, they're going to set up properly. You don't really have to worry about it. Um, if you're going to be keeping the center channel, see the Ford factory center channel isn't up mixed or anything. It's just a, just a basic, like another speaker in the dash. It's not really tuned to be a center channel. Um, if you want center channel, you really need a better DSP than uh, the audio control because it's really not made to do, it doesn't have any up mixing capability. It's basically going to sound just like the Ford. I mean, you can, you can work with it. You can get it to do what you need. But it's not, it'll just be another speaker making sound that you're going to add into the system. Um, not to say you're going to make it sound bad or anything. It's just not going to be doing up mixing or anything like that. You're not going to get the beneficial. Um, personally, I would just leave it out and, mm -hmm. you know, use the DSP to tune it properly and, and you know, get your delay right. So the, the sound Sounds. comes like it. Now, if you're worried about the passenger, then, yeah, I can totally say, yeah, yeah, add in the center speaker and have some fun with it. Um, yeah. But as far as that goes, you could use an AC, ACM 2.300, which is a really expensive amplifier to use for a center channel. But we've done okay. it in the past. Yeah. Um, you could even use the 1.300, but that's really overkill. iPhone sounded better. Um, this, yeah, that's it from Lewis. Sound. That has nothing to do with us. Nothing to do with us. Good job, yeah. Lewis. No. Um, but I need a real DSP. <laughs> Re-EQ. Oh, re-EQ the DSP. Yeah. Well, there again. Yeah. I mean, it, it could happen. It could happen. Um, what is the largest USB stick that you can use with the Kenwood JVC head units? Um, so the, the new current JVC Kenwood head units will read NTFS. NTFS is the hard drive format. So conceivably, you could just get one of those scan disk little, you know, one terabyte, two terabyte drives and use that oh the problem gosh. that you're going to run into is actually searching it you're going to you're going to lose your hair doing it because there is no there's no catalog there you have to build your own catalog that's why yeah like doing that yeah it's pulling teeth you have to um, build folders and oh, you have oh to build my. you have to build everything it's no fun at all and then you're going to stay there and stuff. Oh, yeah. Going. You're going to have to go through the whole Imagine thing. If you're it. cool with that, yeah, then, yeah, it's just you can use any size hard drive you want, um, you know, because it'll read NTFS through the USB on the gray USB. Yeah. Um, the secondary gray USB. Um, depends on the brand of Android phone. 100%, yeah. Dave. Yes. Yep. 100%. Yep. There's yep. no question about that. Not grouping Android phones into a hole. No, no, no. no. There are many levels of Android. They are really good ones. That's for yes. Sure. That's why I always say Android kills the demo because you never know if you're going to get a good one or a bad one. That is right. You know, so it's yeah. like, ah, this could suck. I think we're good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there you go. Uh, thanks for your help, guys. I just really like your working. Uh, <laughs> There were, so, so I'm always looking for extra things. Always, man. Hey, you yeah. know, it's the fun of it. Got to keep yeah. doing stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, way cool with it. That's why I created the next track button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, um, oh, my God. Uh, by the time you find a song, trip is over. <laughs> I mean, look, much. I got to be honest. That's why I love Apple Music yes. and, and CarPlay because I just get in the car in the morning and just tell it what I want it to play and it just plays it and I go mm -hmm. on. I mean, not that you can't do it with Spotify or, or Apple. Oh, no, you totally do it. You, you can. I, yeah. I like that feature. Whoever does it, I like it. Having to search for a song, kill me now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And no commercials. No. Very true. Yes, Very true. Right. But. No I don't get commercials on Apple Music. Either. No, I mean, if but you, I pay for it, that's for sure. No, but like if you pay for uh, Spotify or whatever you use, whatever you're playing, that's the joy if of you pay, that. You, you don't get commercials. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Unless you're buying a Series XM. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't. It's 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 all fun. That's right. Uh, hey, what's up, Danny? Oh, hey. Uh, Dean made the cover of 12 Oak Clean Water Club. Yay. Happy <laughs> birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I mean, he's not that good. He's just because. Why not? 
Exactly. All right, guys, listen. Um, let's let's call it there. Uh, let's head over to the old laptop for a second. If you're interested in picking up some cool DNF swag, you can find that at dnfswag.com. I'm going to tell you right now, the 4th of July is right around the corner, and nothing will look cooler than sporting the American flag five-star. That's right, this guy right here. If you haven't seen this one before, this is this just screams patriotic like I cannot believe. Thank you, Robin. Um, you should pick yourself up one of these. Now is a good time to order. Keep in mind it takes two to three weeks for, or maybe two weeks for these things to come in, so definitely check that out. And then we'll go here. Either. I was going to go to the tool. Oh, oh, right, you already got it up? It. All right, yeah, cool. I don't know what I was good. thinking. I mean, we have DNF, two laptops. Yes, I know. DNF Tool Drawer is a place you can find the cool IRTA along with all the tools that we use for our installs. If you see us use something and you're like, hey, man, I don't know where to get it, go to DNF Tool Drawer. We have links to all our tools on the homepage. They're broken into nice little slide, slide the other way. There you go. They're broken into nice little pages so that you can find the stuff we use. Uh, plastics, rivet tools, lighting, install stuff, air tools. It's all there to make your life that much easier for sure. So yeah. make sure you check that stuff out. I don't um, know if you guys going to Notch Fest uh, this weekend. I don't know what I'm doing. I got to hit this button. There we go. <laughs> they didn't do a go. good job with that. The cropping. They made our I, I mean, really I was weird. just pussing when like. Yeah. This yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, uh, we'll be doing the kicker training at Knowledge Fest. So make sure you check that out. That's right. Uh, it's the weekend, guys. I wish, right? No, it's Monday. Monday means that, hey, we have a whole week in front of us. Our week is going to be fun. Make sure to stay tuned on Instagram and YouTube for what's coming up. We, the Saturday show will be a little different, meaning it won't be at 6 o'clock. We'll be live on the floor doing something at some point, as well as we'll be cruising around on Instagram and just taking you guys along, recording as much fun as we can. You guys have a ton of content and make you feel like you were there. Yeah. You guys have a great night as always. See you See later, later, guys. Bye. Bye.